Well, good morning. Good morning. Welcome to uh, church this morning, an hour earlier than uh, normal. But uh, hey, at least we'll have an hour more daylight, which is always a plus. Um, we printed down to write some setting four. That's on page 184. Page 184. Start out by singing our first hymn, 423. 423.
The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Though an army encamp against me, my heart shall Now I ask of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord, and to inquire in his temple. For we will hide thee in his shelter in the day of trouble. He will conceal thee under the cover of his tent. He will lift thee high upon a rock. Glory be to the Father and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? We continue on page 184 as we sing, Lord, have mercy. After that, we sing him 422. Make a fiery serpent and set it on a pole. 
And everyone who is bitten, when he sees it, shall live. So Moses made a bronze serpent and set it on a pole. And if a serpent bit anyone, he would look at the bronze serpent and live. This is the word of the Lord. Be to God. This lesson from uh, St. Paul's letter to the Ephesians, chapter 2. And you were dead in the trespasses and sins in which you once walked, following the course of this world, following the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work in the sons of disobedience among whom we all once lived in the passions of our flesh, carrying out the desires of the body and the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, like the rest of mankind. But God, being rich in mercy, because of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace have you have been saved. And raised us up with him and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So that in the coming ages he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace. The kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God. This is the word of the Lord. Praise Praise God. God. Please now stand as we hear the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the third chapter. As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever do, does not believe is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment. The light has come into the world, and people love the darkness rather than the light, because their deeds were evil. For everyone who does wicked things hates the light and does not come to the light, lest his deeds should be exposed. But whoever does what is true comes to the light, so that it may be clearly seen that his deeds have been carried out in God. This is the Gospel of the Lord. We turn now to page 192 and we confess our Christian faith as we speak the Apostles' Creed. We confess our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty.
my mouth and the meditation of our hearts. Be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God the Father, from the Lord and the Savior Jesus. Amen. Well, <clears throat> dear friends of Christ, <clears throat> I've lived in Benton County now for almost seven years, and I have yet <clears throat> to encounter one of those big black rat snakes. Y'all know what I'm talking about, right? I hear about them all the time. I, I, they can get really huge, I understand. But their bite won't kill you. Now, don't get me wrong either, folks. Uh, I don't need any of you to go find one for me <laughs> and bring it to my house. No. I'd like to encounter it my own self. But, you know, snakes don't bother me. Spiders are a whole different story. <laughs> but snakes, ah, no problem. <coughs> but some of you, I am sure, would rather be getting a root canal than be in the presence of a slithery, slimy, hissing snake. Now, there's good reasons to fear snakes. Or to be repulsed by them. Some snakes can kill with a tiny bite. Some snakes can wrap themselves around us and crush the life from us. But it goes deeper even than just you know how they look and how they crawl around and all that. Because it's no small thing that Satan decided to take on the form of a snake to tempt our first parents in the garden to sin. And since he did that, God condemned the snake to crawl on its belly and lick the dust until all eternity. You see, the snake embodies the consequences of sin. So we read about the snake event in the book of Numbers this morning. And we shouldn't be surprised that the consequences of sin of the people of Israel were snakes. And now, this is one of my favorite accounts. In the Old Testament, and for no other reason, just of how actually comical it is. So just picture it in your head. An army of snakes is slithering toward the camp. Think of an old lady screaming in horror, jumping on a chair to get away from the squirming danger noodle. <laughs> Remember. The people of Israel at this time numbered in the millions at this time of their wandering in the wilderness. So the number of snakes that had to come and invite them had to be absolutely staggering. And the snakes do what snakes do. They bit the people. And many of the people of Israel died. I guess it doesn't end as comical as it begins. But we must remember that the snakes were Israel's consequences for their sin. What was their sin? Well, they grumbled against Moses and against the Lord God. That was the sin on face value, you see. But it goes deeper than that. See, the main sin of the people of Israel as they wandered in the wilderness is that they did not trust God. 
And I'll give some examples of that in a moment. But the stakes were the consequences of their sin, as well as proving to be a test of trust and faith given to them by God. Remember a few weeks ago from Abraham and Isaac, God doesn't tempt people, but he may very well test our trust and faith in him. So again, <clears throat> their sin on face value is this. This is the middle of verse 4 of our Old Testament lesson. And the people became impatient on the way, and the people spoke against God and against Moses, saying, Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no food and no water. And we loathe this worthless food. There's the sin of grumbling against God and against Moses. But again, it's deeper than just the act of grumbling. It is a lack of trust. More than that, it is a disregard of all that God had done for them already. How soon have they forgotten what their God has done? You see, their God created them. He chose them to be his people over and above all of the peoples of the earth. They found themselves in slavery in Egypt, doing hard labor, being treated as animals by the Egyptians. And so they cry out to God. And God heard their cry, and he raised up Moses to lead them out of slavery by using miraculous, wonderful acts of power and might, like turning the Nile into blood, like covering the, camp, or the, the Egyptian cities in frogs, like parting the Red Sea so the people could cross on dry Ground. And yet, it, 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 you know, and once they got out of Egypt, it, again, it was their own fault that they had to wander in the wilderness. But even there, God takes care of them. They received bread from he heaven. You know, the manna, <coughs> it just showed up on the ground every day. They didn't have to go to the store and buy it. It was just there. And they gathered it up. And God gave them quail. God even gave them water. Kind of a weird, another weird thing about the people of Israel wandering, you know, they had a rock that would follow them in all of their wandering. And from that rock flowed as much water as they needed. And yet, in Numbers 21, they didn't mention any of that. They didn't mention what God had done for them. No, in fact, they wished to be back in Egypt as slaves. Well, at least in Egypt, we would get a fish and an onion sometimes. Oh, sure, we had to work without being paid, and it was hard labor, but hey, at least we ate better. And again, sure, their, situ their situation wandering in the wilderness isn't ideal. They would rather not be doing that. <laughs> but they are fed. They have water. The Lord God has taken care of them. And in return, they do not trust in the Lord. Or maybe more accurately, their trust in God became contingent with how they feel things 
or feel how he should be doing things for them. And then they receive the consequences for their distrust in the Lord. The fiery serpents. When the mob of reptiles drew near and began to bite person after person, people falling down dead all around, it is only then that they cry out to God. This is verse 7 of our Old Testament lesson. They say, the people, uh, the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord and against you. They don't confess that they didn't trust God. Again, that underlying deeper sin. So we have spoken against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord that he take away the serpents from us. How convenient. They have to face the consequence of their sin. And then they pray rightly to God. And notice what they ask. Catch what they ask for? Take away the snakes. Now, that makes sense. That is probably what we would ask for. Take away the snakes so they don't bite anyone else. But God doesn't do that. And I'll come back to that in a moment. Now, we are not unlike the people of Israel. Sometimes it is indeed hard to see the hand of the Lord at work in our lives when things aren't going great. When life just doesn't seem to be fair, you know, I, I want to grumble to whoever would listen. <laughs> Even better, I'd like to grumble to someone who could do something about it. But it is never that easy. Life can be especially difficult when we have to face the consequences of our own sin. Now, for example, if we are petty or dishonest to other people, well, the consequence might be we would lose friends. Or if we drive recklessly, the consequence may be that we total a car. Or at worst, might kill someone on accident. If we spend our money foolishly, the consequence is, well, we're going to stay broke. Living with the consequences does not feel good. Neither does getting bit by a poisonous snake. But it is in those exact times that we have to do one of the hardest things possible. Get out of ourselves and look somewhere else. Trust in God above all things. Especially if things aren't going our way. Again, remember what the people of Israel asked God to do? Take away the snakes. And remember, God didn't do that. See, that was a test of trust and faith in Him. What did God do? Well, He told Moses to make a big, giant snake out of bronze and put it up on a pole in the middle of the camp and everyone who was already bitten by a snake, all they needed to do, it's as simple as this, just look at that bronze snake and they would live. That sounds like way more work 
than just simply taking the snakes away. But it required an act of trust on the part of those who were bitten. God gave freely. God gave freely the way to live. It sounds kind of dumb. All you got to do is look at the snake on a pole. Now, that's not the way I would do it. But God never asked me. But the people of Israel are only left with that one choice, with that one hope. God didn't take the snakes away. The consequences of their sins were still slithering around at their feet. But if one happened to bite, they had the cure. They had the mercy of God up on a pole. They had life where death once was. All they had to do was trust in God, do what he said, and look at the stake on the pole. Well, the same goes for us. God never promises to take our stakes away. Though the consequences of our sin may follow us our entire lifetime. Let's take the example of someone who murdered someone else, repented of their sins, well, they still have to spend the rest of their life in jail. We would like God to take our problems and our worries away. Well, that'd be the easy way. But God rather gives us the way of faith and trust in Him alone. He raised up His own Son up on the pole of the cross as the sacrifice for our sins. And from that cross flows God's free forgiveness, flows uh, flows healing, flows life and life eternal, and it shines in our lives as the hope that we have when this world can be at its darkest. All we have to do is look up and trust in God's promises. And believe in the Son of Man lifted high up on the cross. And so then our promise this day and every day of our lives is that for God so loved the world that he gave his only Son that whoever believes in him, trusts in him, will not perish but have eternal life. Amen. And now may the peace of God which surpasses all human understanding guide our hearts and minds in the one true faith, even in the life of our lasting. Amen. <coughs> now in response to the preaching of God's word, we will sing the words of Psalm 51, Create in me a clean heart of God. That begins on the bottom of page 192. Please stand as we sing.
seated as we worship our God with our tithes and offerings. by saying, Lord, in your mercy, congregation responds by saying, hear our prayer. Please stand as we pray. O Lord God, draw us into your light. Expose wherever we, are, wherever we, like your people of old, have thought, spoken, and acted against you, that in repentance we might look to your Son lifted on the cross and be saved from your righteous wrath. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you had Moses lift up that bronze serpent in the wilderness, thereby foreshadowing your own son lifting up on the cross. Teach us to hear in the Old Testament the promises and pictures of the coming Christ, who is their Savior and ours. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. O oh God, you are our light and our salvation. Hide in your shelter all those whom we uplift to your care, especially Brad, Arthur, Tom, Gail, Marilyn, Ethelene, Marvin, Pat, Gabe, Jennifer, Russell, Jamie, Russ, and Loretta, and all those we lift up upon our hearts. All these who suffer in body, mind, or soul, keep them in their day of trouble from falling into faithless fear, and uphold them with your peace in Christ. Lord, in your mercy, Amen. gracious Lord, you have made us alive in Christ even when we were dead in our trespasses and sins. Cause your spirit to be at work within us that we may not carry out the sinful desires of our bodies and minds, but be your workmanship in Christ, walking in the good works he has prepared for us. Lord, in your mercy, into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who has also taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, to be written for our learning. Grant that we may so hear them, read, mark, learn, and take them to heart, that by the patience and comfort of your holy word, 
we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You see now the blessing of the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Maybe be seated for just a few announcements. Uh, read everything else that we have uh, going on in our bulletin. Um, let's see. On Wednesday, we continue our uh, midweek Lenten services. Uh, we're, we are at Trinity on Wednesday. Uh, and the uh, fifth through eighth grade of our Lutheran school will be singing at that service. Uh, Dinner is at uh, 5.30. Services at 7. So take notice of that. Okay. I believe we're uh, we have a note about the Missouri District Shine event that gets our church's schools involved in our community. I believe we're still looking for a few uh, people that need any yard work done. While we have 85 uh, earnest and willing Lutheran school kids to come out and help. So if, you, if uh, you want your yard cleaned up, just call the Lutheran School, and uh, we'll get that in the works for you. We do have a, there is a dinner today uh, at Trinity. Uh, that's their men's club. It's a German dinner, uh, so take notice of that. Um, <clears throat> Fathers and Husbands group, we're going to try to meet next Sunday. Okay, I'll get a text message out, but next Sunday... Uh, since I was a single parent last week, uh, trying to do with them, so we're going to shoot for next Sunday on that. Again, I'll get a text out on that. Uh, you might notice if you go out to your right uh, towards the bathrooms, we got some new furniture. Uh, that is thanks to some private money. Uh, so we will enjoy those things there. There's a coffee bar. Uh, with that, uh, you have until the end of March to dri direct your private choice dollars. If you have not, if you're a private member and have not yet directed your choice dollars, uh, you can direct it to our church. Uh, you have until the end of the month. If you need help doing that, uh, I can certainly help you out on that. Uh, Let's try to take that money uh, and use it however they want. So, again, if you have not directed your thriving choice dollars, you have to do it every year, uh, so make sure you do that. Also remember, if you're a thriving member, every year you get two action teams. Those are good for a $250 card each. Um, and we always have something we could use uh, to, uh, to uh, employ that money. Any other announcements? Seeing none, we close on the last day of 425 and 425.